The Mandela Effect, a freaky phenomenon causing the collective misremembering of a fact or event. Tens of thousands of people, or in some cases more, all claim to have a memory of something that never actually occurred. What could cause such a phenomena? Have we crossed into an alternate reality? The Mandela Effect, also known as the Mass Memory Discrepancy Effect, is a phenomenon where multiple people across the globe either remember an event that did not happen or remember the details of an event differently than what actually occurred. What makes it special is that all the people who have these altered memories remember the alternate history exactly the same way, almost as if they are from a different timeline. Some claim that their false memories are so strong that they could not have imagined them, so reality must have changed. There are hundreds of examples of Mandela effects, or MMDEs, but this trial attempts to address only one question. Are these just false memories, or is there something more at work? The Mandela Effect was named after Nelson Mandela because many people remember him dying in the 1980s, long before his actual death. His date of death in the 1980s was even printed. Well, now this is where it gets creepy. So there's a book called English Alive, and it was published on October 1st of 1991. And inside of that book is a quote that says, Nelson Mandela died on the 23rd of July in 1991. And that's in a book that was published years ago. And you can't put things like that in a book if they're fake or else you'll get sued. Which means that this is a piece of evidence that he actually did die a long time ago, just in an alternate universe. Oof, fucking creeps me out. After this false memory came to light, many new discrepancies began to surface. Examples include changes to human anatomy, alterations to how famous logos appear, and even famous names having changed. In this case, the prosecution will try to prove that the Mandela effect is not simply psychology. They will argue that there is something more at work than faulty memory. In contrast, the defense will be arguing that the Mandela effect is caused merely by defects in human memory. They will state that the phenomenon can be explained without resorting to anything other than psychology. There are many theories about what causes the Mandela Effect, including alternate dimensions, time travel, government conspiracies, and the effects of particle collider. The jury should be aware that the prosecution will not be trying to prove any of these theories. Instead, they will simply be trying to argue that there is more than psychology at work. The original Mandela Effect, where it gets its name from, was when Nelson Mandela's death was announced in 2013, and many remembered him dying long before then. In the book English Alive, published in 1990, it even stated that Mandela died on July 23rd, 1991. The specificity of the date given, along with it being published, suggests there has been changes to our history. Mistakes are made in books, just like any other media. Yes, this is interesting, but if a person with the significance and fame of Nelson Mandela had in fact died on this date, surely there would be more references than just one. Beyond the misprint in this one book, the false memory can easily be explained. Nelson Mandela was in prison for revolutionary activity in a dangerous time, and so incorrectly assuming he died is very possible. Then, hearing about it later would cause confusion. The prosecution disagrees, so let's take a look at a couple of examples that cannot be so easily discounted. Changes to anatomy. The appearance of tiny holes in the human skull. That eye sockets are no longer hollow and in addition, a new organ being discovered are all cited as being new. 
This is a rather surprising fact, given that human anatomy has been one of the most intensely studied topics in human history. The discovery of a new organ, the interstitium, especially cannot be explained by simple fault memory. This new organ is microscopic, which is why this is untrue. As quoted by LiveScience.com, the researchers said that these fluid-filled spaces, the interstitium, have been missing for decades because they don't show up on standard microscopic slides that researchers use to peer into the cellular world. The researchers are calling this network of fluid-filled spaces an organ. When it comes to supposed changes of the human anatomy, they are all quite minor and could easily be missed by the casual observer. Believers in the Mandela Effect use the term residue when referring to the evidence of human history being altered. This is important because in the case of human anatomy, there is residue related to these changes. It is claimed that some models of skulls used in various anatomy classes don't have these new extra holes, called the mental foramina. In addition, a common motif in artwork is a snake crawling through the eye sockets of a skull, which would be impossible if they were covered in bone as they are now. These pieces of evidence show that history at some point must have changed. Why would there be incorrect anatomy models produced or artwork depicting the impossible so many times if anatomy was forever the same? Using artwork as proof of anything is very weak as no form of art is necessarily true to life. Secondly, even if there are a few incorrect anatomical models, the majority are correct and the mental foramina are such small details that they, again, could easily be missed by casual observers. Another example that is very hard to argue against is that of the Laughing Cow Cheese logo. People remembered the cow mascot having a gold nose ring, which is no longer present, yet this was only the first change made to the logo. After this memory was made public, skeptics argued that people must be confused by the cow's gold earrings, misremembering these as a nose ring. This was a very standard argument. What makes this significant is the cow on the logo no longer had the gold earrings, either. The online posts arguing that the earrings were being misremembered still exist, showing that just a short time ago, these were present, and now they too are gone. While there do exist forum posts speaking about the golden earrings on the cow, these posts could have been made by people unfamiliar with the logo simply trying to explain the memory. Also, the posts could have been made by internet trolls later to lend false credibility to the Mandela Effect retroactively. The prosecution can cite examples for hours, but in general the problem with most Mandela Effects is that they are small and insignificant, so they can be explained without much effort. A perfect example is in the movie Forrest Gump. People swear that Tom Hanks said life is like a box of chocolates, when in fact he says Life was like a box of chocolates. Mishearing a single word in a sentence or even misremembering a single word is very easy to do. People could have easily assumed what he was saying and began misquoting it. Another easily disproven example is that the Pillsbury Doughboy's necktie is white, when most people remember it being blue. Many say that the picture of him simply looks wrong. However, Take notice that he has a blue Pillsbury logo on his hat, which could easily cause confusion in people who try to remember what he looks like. Therefore, the defence claims that many Mandela effects are very tiny changes that could be explained by affected persons simply becoming confused. Misremembering small details is the same reason why human memory cannot be completely relied upon for eyewitness testimonies as well. Even if many of the discrepancies can be explained away in this way, the sheer number of examples and the number of people claiming that what exists now is wrong is overwhelming. This clearly shows that something must be going on. The number of people who falsely remembered something doesn't prove anything. As stated, many Mandela effects are single words from movies, tiny changes to logos, etc. And it is a fact that such small changes can be misremembered. Objection. No facts have yet been established. We ask the jury to disregard the previous statement. Sustained. The jury will decide the facts in this case. The problem with saying that every Mandela effect can be explained by mere psychological means is that so many people have the exact same false memory. If these were just defects in the human mind, every person should have different versions of the so-called false memory. Not true. 
as suggestibility cannot be discounted. For example, let's make up a Mandela effect and follow it through to the end. The jury needs to be aware that what we are about to talk about is not a known Mandela effect. This is made up to demonstrate our point. We claim that we have an alternate memory of the 1991 sitcom Dinosaurs. Our memory is that instead of dinosaurs, the show was about cavemen and was originally called Dinosaur Men. The plot of the show was about a family of cavemen who had dinosaur neighbours. Now, suddenly the show has changed. The dinosaur neighbours are the main characters and the cavemen no longer exist. We even remember one specific episode where cavemen were acting racist towards dinosaurs, which caused controversy at the time. There was even residue of the old show as the humans, who were once the main cast, are now featured in at least one episode. What about... Do you think... Uh, yeah, I bet um, that's their mother. Um, well, how do you know? I mean, the, the woods are crawling with cave people. Uh, she could be anybody. Charlene, uh, it's showtime. So, is my talented daughter ready to go to the fair? Those lines for the porta potties aren't getting any shorter. Once this memory is put out into the public consciousness, people may be influenced to start remembering the false memory themselves. My motivation in posting this might be an actual memory on my part, attention or deliberate manipulation. Whatever the reason, if enough suggestible people read this and start remembering the same thing, more and more details might start emerging about this show that never existed. After some point in time, this will begin to seem legitimate, even though it was all made up. The more obscure the initial reference, such as this old TV show, the easier it is to add details to it. To add to our point, there is even a psychological condition called false memory syndrome, which demonstrates that suggestibility can lead to the creation of vivid, realistic and completely false memories. Per the Encyclopedia Britannica, false memory syndrome, also known as recovered memory, pseudomemory and memory distortion, is the experience of seeming to remember events that never actually occurred. These pseudo-memories are often quite vivid and emotionally charged. Researchers have found that people who recover pseudo-memories of trauma are often more suggestible. Questions about the authenticity of memories recovered in therapy have led to debates between various academic, legal and medical professionals. While false memory syndrome is something that can occur, it is unclear exactly how these memories are formed. So there is no connection with this, and the theory that suggestible people are influencing each other in creating and reinforcing the Mandela effects. In addition, this theory from the defense assumes that there must be many people who are willing to start or contribute to a false story. This is unrealistic. Objection. The defense states that there may be many motivations behind creating and spreading false memories, including suggestibility. We did not state that these are all created maliciously. Overruled. The prosecution did not misrepresent the theory presented by the defense. Why it is unrealistic to presume there are multiple people creating Mandela effects, regardless of motivation, is because we have another example of this exact thing. Creepypasta. For those who don't know, creepypastas are stories on the internet similar to urban legends. They are all scary narratives claimed to be real and there are literally thousands of them. They range in quality from extremely poor to professionally done. Like Mandela effects, after one story becomes popular, many people become convinced it was based on truth. Creepypastas, despite their claims of authenticity, are known to be mostly made up due to the sheer number of them and because of their varying quality. In contrast, if Mandela effects were being created in a similar way, we would expect identical variations in quality to emerge and their quantity to increase excessively. The defense agrees, but we add that the number of Mandela effects do continue to increase every day, and each vary greatly in quality. Therefore we say creepypastas and Mandela effects are created and spread in identical ways.
Have you ever been telling a story to friends and you swear that a certain person was there, but one of your friends insists that they weren't? How could this be? How can two people be present at the exact same event, yet disagree on something as obvious as who they were with? The harsh truth is that our memories are not nearly as accurate as we lead ourselves to believe. Common misconceptions like that example happen on a daily basis. In the book 1984, George Orwell depicts a dystopian future consisting of constant surveillance and a lack of personal freedom. Many aspects of this novel are well known as it is a classic, but one element that is less discussed is extremely relevant to the topic of the Mandela Effect, the Ministry of Truth. The Ministry of Truth was a department of the government that censored the past by rewriting history to reflect what the leaders wanted at any given moment. History was considered flexible, it was able to be changed as the control of information was the only thing of import. Altering the past was a daily reality, so much so that people barely noticed and simply went along with it. As quoted by Brian Hyde of St. George News, in Orwell's novel, the Ministry of Truth was responsible for disseminating propaganda to the people of Oceania. Its purpose was to spin the facts and make them fit the party line. In the case of blatant contradictions, its job was to literally rewrite history, only those truths that would further the cause of the party were allowed to emanate from the ministry. Given how mass surveillance, the erosion of personal freedoms, and many other aspects of the novel have begun already, isn't it possible that the changes being noticed by people, known as the Mandela Effect, are alterations to the past that are being made by some type of agency like this? Objection! The prosecution is begging the question. Sustained. While this is a possible theory, the jury is reminded that there is no proof of this. We would also like to remind the jury that the Ministry of Truth was a department of propaganda, and the Mandela Effect has no direct benefit for the government. Therefore, saying that these changes come from a government agency is illogical. Although the current examples have no direct ties to government policy, it is very possible that some agency is practicing their ability to change or alter the past with minor events. These changes are small enough that they wouldn't be overtly noticed while experiments were conducted. Tied to this, the government could also be orchestrating these small changes to desensitize the public to the past being altered. This way, if they were to start making much bigger changes, the public would be used to it. Finally, although many small changes have been noticed, it is also very possible that large changes have taken place and we are only noticing the periphery of these alterations. In other words, large changes to the past could have taken place, but the evidence of these have not been fully covered up. Another popular theory is that the particle collider at CERN is altering reality by means of quantum physics. Quantum computing has the potential to change time. And while this sounds like science fiction, it is reality. This quote is from a respectable scientist, in fact, one of the founders of this field, that may be a little bit it may look a little strange to you who don't follow theoretical physics, but there is a very clear prediction that our most successful theory of nature makes, and that is that there are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to this session or not. Quantum mechanics makes a very specific prediction that all of those are as real as the thing that you remember. And this is bizarre, because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. If CERN is involved, the alterations may or may not be intentional, as it is very possible that they are altering small parts of our timeline by mistake. They could also be part of the government agency mentioned earlier, altering time, or at least testing out their ability to do so. 
While it is possible to access alternative dimensions using quantum physics, the idea that CERN is continuously altering reality either intentionally or unintentionally is very alarmist. In fact, whenever a new untested technology comes around, people tend to worry in an overblown and exaggerated manner. Per the publication Behavioural Scientist, in 2014, one British newspaper compared playing video games to using heroin. In 2017, a headline in The Atlantic asked, Have smartphones destroyed a generation? For decades, some scholar activists have taken to comparing the impact of TV violence to smoking on lung cancer. Since the earliest 20th century, psychologists have been concerned with how technology affects health and well-being. In the 1930s, they weighed the effects of listening to the radio. In the 1960s, they turned their attention to television. And in more recent years, they've expanded on their research to video games and cell phone use. Also quoting Clive Thompson from Wired.com, To provoke moral panic, a technology must satisfy three rules. First, it has to change our relationship to time. Then it has to change our relationship to space. And crucially, it has to change our relationship to one another. Individually, each of these transformations can be unsettling. But if you hit all three, panic. Quantum computing certainly changes our relationship to time and space, as stated earlier. It also has the possibility to change our relationships with each other, if such technology becomes popular and available for personal use. Thus, this topic is breeding ground for such panic. While we agree that fear can be triggered with any new, misunderstood technology, the fact that quantum computing can very realistically alter reality is enough to incite panic in any reasonable person. We also want to remind the jury that the charge is that the Mandela Effect has more to it than just psychology. And the fact remains that quantum computing could be responsible for what we experience as the Mandela Effect. Though there is no set in stone reason as to why the Mandela Effect is happening and why we are just beginning to notice these absurd changes, many thoughts have risen to the table including the thought that perhaps we are living in a computer generated simulation and do not realize it yet. At first, that thought sounds outlandish. On the other hand, if the Mandela Effect proves us anything, it shows that life is not what we once thought it was and we still don't have all the answers of how this universe truly works. This is another story that has been gaining traction, not just due to the Mandela Effect, but for other reasons as well. The idea is that we are living in a simulated, virtual reality that can be reprogrammed and changed on a whim. While the idea of living in a simulation may sound crazy to those unfamiliar with the theory, there are some very respected individuals who take it very seriously. Quoting Olivia Salon from The Guardian, there's a billion to one chance we're living in base reality, Elon Musk said at a conference in June. Musk is just one of the people in Silicon Valley to take a keen interest in the simulation hypothesis, which argues that what we experience as reality is actually a giant computer simulation created by a more sophisticated intelligence. One popular argument for the simulation hypothesis outside of acid trips came from Oxford University's Nick Bostrom in 2003, although the idea dates back as far as the 17th century philosopher Rene Descartes. In a paper titled, are you living in a simulation? Bostrom suggested that members of an advanced post-human civilization with vast computing power might choose to run simulations of their ancestors in the universe. Going further, some have theorized that time travel is real but doesn't work the way we see in the movies. Instead of time changing around us unnoticed, time travelers could be subtly altering the past and we are able to see these differences as they manifest. One final theory that could possibly explain the Mandela Effect has to do with multiverses. The idea is that our universe could be colliding with another one, which is disrupting our reality as we know it. Either way, there are many explanations as to what is causing these strange memory discrepancies, beyond simple psychological flaws. With so many possible alternative explanations, we claim that it is unreasonable to ignore them all. The fact that other explanations and theories exist say nothing about their validity, 
Simple faulty memory as well as suggestibility can still account for every Mandela effect. Finally, the jury should also remember that there is no definitive proof that every Mandela effect is genuine. In other words, it is very possible that many are faked for attention or for other motives altogether. In closing, we quote Fiona Broom from MandelaEffect.com. The Mandela Effect is what happens when someone has a clear memory of something that never happened in this reality. Many of us, mostly total strangers, remember the exact same events with the exact same details. However, our memories are different from what's in history books, newspaper archives, and so on. This isn't a conspiracy and we're not talking about false memories. Many of us speculate that parallel realities exist and until now we've been sliding between them without realizing it. There are so many false memories with so many people that something other than quirks in the brain must be happening. Thousands of people having the same supposedly false memory is very hard to explain using psychology alone. From famous movie lines not existing such as Mirror, Mirror on the Wall from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs or Houston We Have a Problem from Apollo 13 to historical events suddenly appearing such as the first terrorist attack on US soil being in 1916 or the first fax being sent in 1846. There are simply too many examples to cite in one case. Many theories exist to explain how the past could be modified in this way and all of them are reasonable. Disregarding all of them is turning a blind eye, and we should not do this simply because we do not like the truth. Thus, it is quite reasonable to assume there is much more at work than simple psychology. While interesting, the Mandela effect is nothing more than faulty memory and suggestible people influencing each other, to misremember the same event for personal validation. No one likes to think that their own memory is incorrect, and so sharing false memories with others who agree creates immense amounts of psychological satisfaction. The theories presented attempting to explain away these false memories by nearly supernatural means is nothing more than grasping at straws. It is true that the quantum physics, colliding universes, and even CERN could potentially alter reality, but there is absolutely no proof that they are. We also must remember that CERN is simply a scientific organization. The name CERN is derived from an acronym for the European Council for Nuclear Research, a provisional body founded in 1952 with the mandate of establishing a world-class fundamental physics research organization in Europe. At that time, pure physics research concentrated on understanding the inside of the atom, hence the word nuclear. Today, our understanding of matter goes much deeper than the nucleus, and CERN's main area of research is particle physics, the study of the fundamental constituents of matter and the forces acting between them. Many Mandela effects are very small, almost insignificant changes. Most examples are of single words from movie lines, tiny alterations to logos that could have been easily missed or slightly misremembered plot elements from popular movies. It should also be noted that there have been Mandela effects that have been disproven. One example is the spelling of Walmart. Today, the name is spelled Walmart without a hyphen, but many remember it being spelled with a hyphen. In fact, the corporation rebranded themselves in 2008, deleting the hyphen and changing all their storefronts with it. But for quite a long time, the internet claimed that this was a mass memory discrepancy. Because of all these facts, we argue that the Mandela effect is merely a psychological phenomenon. There is no need to resort to elaborate explanations as every example can be accounted for by faulty memory or suggestibility. Now it is your chance to vote on who won, as in the court of public opinion, you are the jury. Use the info button on the video to cast your vote. Voting will close on February 1st, 2019, and then a verdict will be announced. A 50% vote to convict will be required. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe.
The jury is dismissed. <laughs>